you. Welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. Today we're in Exodus 22, and we're going to just look at verse 18 here. We're going through verse by verse, line by line, and we come to some spots that uh, you might say, well, why would we make a devotional about that? Why would we even stop and think about that? Well, it's good to stop and think about it. It's in the Word of God, right? So here it is, verse 18. You shall not allow a sorceress to live. Ha, huh. that's an interesting text. Now remember that these laws that we're looking at now, we had the Ten Commandments back in Exodus chapter 20, and now we're getting kind of an application of these laws to specific cases. So we had the universal global constants, you know, Big Ten, and now we're getting, you know, in different cases, applications. So this one says, you don't allow a sorceress to live. Yikes. Um, so how can we understand this? Is this a godly thing or is this singling out somebody who's different and, you know, smashing them? What is this? Here what's being done is that foreign practices are being addressed that are trying to be brought in. They're trying to bring these into the religion, the life of Israel. And this is not something that should be brought in. You know, these next three today and the next two days, uh, these are in different parts of the Bible. These are all referred to as abominations. So a sorceress, having a sorceress in your midst is actually an abomination. Now, while this points out the female person, this law doubtless applied with equal severity to male persons who might practice sorcery too. So in this case, they were using the female and the majority of sorcerers were perhaps female at this time. So we're using the female in the paradigm. So what is sorcery? Supposedly sorcery means communication with the dead is the key piece here. But of course, you and I both know from studying the Bible, I hope you know, that there are, is no communication with the dead. The dead essentially sleep in the grave. Go read John chapter 11. Uh, they know not anything in the grave. Go to, there's many texts we can look at and we'll study that at some point here. Uh, but, but what happens when you have sorcery is you're actually not communing with any dead person at all. You're communing with a fallen angel, a demon, essentially. So God is wanting to prevent that from happening because guess, you know, what, what good can come from communing with a demon? Uh, they are liars. They're out to destroy. Uh, they're bent fully on your destruction. So you don't really, you know, you don't take the guy who's bent to kill you and go and say, hey, hi, how are you doing? How's lunch? That's not the way you do it. So is sorcery, supposedly it's communicating with the dead here, but uh, since the dead are fallen angels, not actual people, uh, there's an innate deception plugged into this. It's deceiving from the beginning. Now, we noticed again that these laws are applications of the Ten Commandments. So these are uh, taking particular items and addressing them. Well, which one of the Ten Commandments is this an enhancement or an expansion on or an application of? So remember that sorcery would involve this communication with the dead, and that is an alternative authority source. God's word is the authority source, but uh, Isaiah warns us in eight, Isaiah 8, 19 and 20, for example, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Uh, God's word, God is, is, is our authority. The, the word of God is our authority. But in verse 19 in Isaiah 8, chapter 8, it talks about, it warns against seeking to those who peep and mutter, you know, seeking to the sorcerers and the magicians. Instead, look to God. God has the right thing. So it's either deception or God. There's two vying kinds of authority going on here. Perhaps you remember the first spiritualistic experience ever recorded in the Bible. You'll find it on almost the first page, Genesis chapter 3. There Eve goes to the place where she's not supposed to go. She begins having a conversation with the serpent. Satan is working through the serpent. And he says, oh, if you eat this, you will not surely die. And so she eats. And of course, that's how uh, she disobeys God and she winds up disregarding. And now she sins and she, causes, she leads Adam into sin. So this is the first spiritual experience you ever see. And it's on almost the first or second page of your Bible. Eve communicating with, with Satan via the serpent. That's a spiritualistic type experience. Now, what's interesting there is look at the answer that's given in Genesis 3. Uh, what's going to happen to the serpent? What is the judgment that comes in for, for him leading Eve into this sin? Well, it says that the seed of the woman, which is going to ultimately be Jesus, he will be injured by the serpent, but he's going to stomp on the serpent's head. That's a fatal blow. He's going to crush the head of the serpent. So death penalty there ultimately for Satan predicted on like the third chapter in the Bible. Death for, the, for this alternative authority source that's undermining God's 
God's true authority and the truth versus lies. So really that was the first spiritualistic experience. Death was the punishment there. So is it a surprise that death's a punishment here in Exodus? Also remember that Israel is just coming out from centuries of dominance in of the Egyptian religion, the pantheistic, polytheistic religions of Egypt. And God is taking some strong uh, work to bring them into the right line. This is a theocracy, kind of a direct God directly guiding his people through his leader, Moses. Uh, today, we're not under a theocracy. Today, we're in a representative democracy. And God has not granted that kind of power uh, to deal with uh, religious infractions to the government, civil government. So things are at different times. But here, you're under a theocracy, and the people should know better. So God is bringing the people to a better authority uh, than all these fake gods, which don't even exist anyway. They're just uh, avenues for satanic influence. And so God is trying to bring his people up. It's a good thing. And he didn't want there to be any sorcerers in the land. This would be open, blatant, in-your-face rebellion, not acceptable. All right, see you tomorrow morning.